हेलो सो हम लोग आ गए हैं हस्की पार्क के अंदर और अभी हम आपको मिलवाते हैं बहुत सारे हस्की से लग रहा है हेलो पोंटूस हेलो पोंटूस तीन दोस्त का नाम है बट्टी रोजी बारबी 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 कौन सी इनमें से बारबी 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 किसी ने भी नहीं देखा in the back and it has his boot feet here in these things and both hands here and you are mostly driving the sled by your own body weight so if you want the sled to turn a little bit to the right just lean on the right side then if you want to go to the left yeah, just lean on the left side and now uh, leaning into the corners is very important so if you turn right for example remember to lean on the inside of the corner so if you turn right Lean on the right side, and if you turn left, lean on the left side. So inside of the corner, and um, yeah, the sled normally goes where you lean. So if the sled is in the uh, straight track, going too much on the right, just lean on the opposite direction. So the sled goes where you lean, and um, yeah. So. The most important thing about the sled is the brake, which is right here, the metal one here. You can come a little closer if you don't see, but it's the metal one here. So if you want to slow down, just put your one feet on the brake like this. Mm -hmm. And if you want to stop the whole sled, put your both feet like this. And then with your hands, you can uh, lift up the sled a little bit, so it will be stopping that sled completely. Mm -hmm. So slowing down with one, one feet and stopping the whole sled with two feet and lift up the sled with your hands. And um, there is few uphills on the track, so you might have to help the dogs a bit. Uh, at least if you have someone in here, so the sled is of course a little bit heavier. So you might have to help the dogs and you can do that by kicking the sled like this or pushing the sled like this. So it is only when up if they're going a little bit like slower, they're a bit tired, then you can help them like that. And um, yeah, do you want to change the driver? Yes. Okay, so we'll stop at the some point of the track and I'll be telling you the signs because I have the stop sign and those kind of signs so you know how to stop. So um, when we stop, you can change the driver. And um, I can take pictures of you all if you want. And I'm going to explain the how, the, how you change the driver. So the one who is here, who has been driving, has to keep his both feet here. And when you change the driver, the other one uh, comes up and over here. And you're slowly changing the one who keeps the brake. So that every, uh, someone has always uh, her or his feet here on the brake so the dogs won't run away. And when we stop and be in the point that I, can, I take pictures of you, uh, you have to keep uh, feet on the brake all the time. Because if you are like this, the dogs will run away. So that is very important thing too. Did you have cases like that? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, sometimes some people maybe 
if they don't understand English that well, they have just stood uh, up from the break and then the dog has left. But usually we catch them pretty fast. And um, we have a guy with the snowmobile with us over, over there, so he will be pretty close to us. So, so he will be he will come there and help us. Okay. Um, so like run or you know if you lose the control you know that i think that's one of the causes that everyone uh has. yeah so you don't have to step up the uh, sled if they are going like normal speed but if they're going really fast then you can like help them you will you will see that when you need to help them but yeah um sometimes you might maybe lose your balance so then maybe you fall and then the dog will run away but uh Again, he will come and help us, but um, I recommend to you uh, to whatever happens, like if you sleep from here, just remember to keep uh, just keep your hands in here. Mm -hmm. So try to hold on, even if you if you need they start going faster or something. But I don't think this will that will happen today. But yeah, um, um, yeah, and you have uh, six dogs in the sled and you are driving yourself yes. so yeah you have five so they're not going that fast like they're going uh, pretty much the same speed because you're only only by yourself but yeah you have uh, six dogs in your sled and you have to remember to give safe keep safe distance so the safe distance is about three to five meters and it is from your first dogs to the next one's driver's back so how much from, again, how many get? Uh, three to five meters. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it is about from here to maybe to that tree or even more. Yeah. Yeah. So here to that tree, or maybe even more. Yeah. So yeah, and the safe distance is very important because then you'll have time to react. And if the sled in front of you is slowing down, you have to slow down as well. And yeah, so you have the time to react, and that is very important because if something happens in the front and you are too close and you might not even uh, get time to break at all if something happens in the front so yeah and um i have few hand signs i'll be showing you now so this means stop mm -hmm. this means let's go and this means slow down mm -hmm. uh, stop yeah. let's go and slow down Mm -hmm. So the stop sign is at least one I'm going to show you when we're stopping and I'm going to take pictures of you and, <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, do you have any questions? Uh, uh, the kids are coming with us uh, or yeah. going with uh, Masha? Uh, with you, so you can take one kid and you can take one kid with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the sled. So in the sled we have uh, lead dogs, then we have team dogs, and then we have wheel dogs. So the uh, lead dogs are the ones in the front, so they know the way, they know left and right, so they are kind of like the smartest dogs we have. And um, then in the middle there are team dogs, so they are pretty average runners, not the strongest, not the fastest, but they do come along with each other pretty well, so that's why they are in the middle. And in the back we have the wheel dogs and they are the strongest ones, so they are doing the most work by pulling the sled. So yeah, so winters they are working, so they have um, five work days a week and then two rest days. So usually they work every other day, but yeah, it depends on the dog and a little bit about the team, so some dogs need more rest than others especially the older ones are not running that much as the younger ones obviously so yeah winters they are working but in the summers it is too hot for them for to run so they are having a holiday at summer so they we let few kennels in the park area um open so they can run free, freely in the park area and then they have a swimming pools in the summer so they can pull up there and um uh they actually um they have uh, two layers of fur so they shed the layers in the summer so they don't have that hot in the summer but it would be still too hot for them to run 
So in the autumns when it's under 15 degrees, then we start to train them and then we have the summer cards so they get to pull that kind of thing in the autumns. So that is also very fun for them, but they cannot run that much because that is still pretty hot for them. So perfect temperature for them to run would be minus 20 or minus 25. Wow. Yeah. So this is actually also very warm for them. So they might need more rest and more breaks and sometimes even snacks during the day. And what they... And what they eat is a raw meat and there is dry food also mixed in the meat and vitamins. So in the food they get everything they need. And that's what they get in the evenings. So they can eat one kilo to three kilos depending on the size of the dog and whether it's a female or a male. And um, in the mornings they get kind of like a soup. So there is that uh, food and there is also hot water mixed in that food. So they get to drink as well. Uh, they eat snow, so that's what they drink. But with that soup, we like get to see that they actually drink the water. So in the winters, they eat snow because if they, we gave them water, it would be freezing pretty soon. So mm. they are used to eating snow. But obviously, in the summers, they get normal water to drink. And um, yeah. Usually you would imagine a husky being this big, fluffy, blue-eyed dog. But we actually have quite a few of the kind of like the movie husky looking mm -hmm. dogs. So they are pretty different looking Siberian huskies. They might be quite small and they might have uh, brown eyes. Uh, actually 70% of the huskies have brown eyes and only 20% have blue eyes and the rest, the 10% have blue and brown or mixed colored eyes but yeah the kind of husky you would imagine the fluffy blue eyed husky is usually a um, showline husky so there's two type uh, two lines of huskies so there's showline huskies and workline huskies and we have a few showline huskies here i don't know if you saw batman over there in the front yard but he is very fluffy mm -hmm. he has short legs and he's the kind of showline husky so he is not that good runner he also has had like to run and um but he's not that good at it and he's not like made for it so the work line huskies what we have they are more muscular they have uh, longer legs so they are more made for the running so yeah <laughs> two types of huskies and you usually recognize them by the fluffiness and the size of the huskies but yeah, and um, the speed, how fast they can go, they can go 30 to 35 kilometers per hour when they are in the sled. And if they run free, they would go even uh, over 40 kilometers per hour. So they are pretty fast runners. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so all of our huskies are born here and they retire from here when they are about 9 to 11 years old. So depending on the dog again, but we have few 11 years old dogs here who are to be retired soon because they are getting tired and they are not that fast runners and they need more, more relaxing. And um, some of the retired, retired dogs still need a lot of exercise so they might pull their owner who is in, on skis or in a small sled. So they might still need a lot of exercise and um, people from here or from somewhere around Finland might adopt the dogs from here and and they might spend the rest of their life in a corner of a couch or then running with some kind of skis. So yeah. What is the ratio of female and male? Uh, how, many, how many males and females we have? Uh, I would say 50-50 about oh, what okay. we have. Okay. And and, mm -hmm. and in the team also, usually there are more ma males in the back because they are stronger ones. My team was only male. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. But yeah, usually I would say that they are 50-50, especially when we have the 12 dogs mm -hmm. sled. Usually there might be like six mm -hmm. uh, females in the front, I mean six males 12 in the back. 12 sledge sounds very big. Is, is that a big sledge? Uh, 12. Yeah, that yeah. is, that is. I don't know if there is even... 
bigger so that's than that might be but it's bigger than what we draw today uh, yeah yeah, cool. yeah mm -hmm. so that's only six six dogs left so there is like half more in the sleds we are driving here mm -hmm. are they fertile do they reproduce I'm sorry um i mean do they give birth here oh like, uh, yeah do yeah so we like that? Uh, yeah so we breed the dogs here mm -hmm. um there's now eight puppies in the husky hugging area and then we have like four very small puppies so right now we're not, ha not having any more puppies but next year again but yeah we breed the dogs here and um of course we have to see that they are not related to each other but yeah usually sometimes when they're in the sled for example in the team we might see that there are two dogs that are very liking each other so and i'm not the one who decides it but some might decide that um they would make a good couple and cute puppies so that's my that's how they might decide to get more puppies but yeah so we breed them all here and and how do you decide how to separate the dogs to different um you know places like for example in some there are five in some there is three uh so well, strange you know uh, they might be related to each other so they might be brothers and sisters or then they have grown with each other from they have been like very small and they have grown together and um when we have new puppies we'll uh, we'll see at first how do they come along with each other but for example when we have eight puppies not all of them might get along with each other so they might move to uh, a certain kennel in here and then we'll see how do they come along with, with each other and they might become a very good friends in some kennel and then we, then they will stay there but yeah, that's that's how they decide. So they usually from from a puppy they are with some some dogs and they are their friends and they have known their their whole life the dogs they are with. So yeah, yeah. I think I told pretty much everything I know about the huskies. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, okay, so. The best season to come here is winter and I would say Christmas because we are uh, close to the Santa Claus village and um, we have here 500 meter ride so that is the shortest one but that goes very fast and then we have two kilometer ride and that is also a very good option and then we have five kilometer ride so that's the kind of rides we have here and yeah uh, you can book from the internet or when you come uh, here from the entrance you can book all the ride as well so here it comes the end of our husky, husky ride. ride oh such it was a wonderful experience yes hum logo kafi maza aaya once in a lifetime experience hai aur main aap logo se ek kahunga zarur ki aap jab kabhi bhi kare husky ride ya snowmobile to self driving le kyunki hame bhi starting mein thoda sa dar to lag raha tha husky ride se especially kyunki uh, जो यहाँ पर कुत्ते जो खेसते हैं और डर लगता है कि पीछे ना हम लोग गिर जाएं या क्या होगा बट आप उनके इंस्ट्रक्शंस अच्छे से सुने और सच में बहुत मजा आएगा सेल्फ ड्राइव करने में हाँ बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत मजा आया थोड़ा सा लगता है कुत्ते खेच रहे हैं वो एक अलग पॉइंट ऑफ कंसर्न है बट लेकिन एक्सपीरियंस वाइज बहुत अच्छा लगता है वो लोग इसी चीज़ के लिए बने हैं और ट्रेन इसी चीज़ के लिए हुए हैं तो उस उसमें कुछ ऑब्जेक्शनेबल बात नहीं है बट लेकिन बहुत मज़ा आया अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस था ये लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस मेरे लिए रहा मज़ा आया सो so, मैं आप लोगों से कहूँगा कि आप लोग अगर रोबोमियानी में हैं और यहाँ पर आकर हस्की राइड करना चाहते हैं तो यहाँ पर ये हस्की पार्क है सेंटा क्लॉज विलेज में ही यहाँ पर आएँ यहाँ पर आप थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ राइड्स बुक कर सकते हैं जैसे कि इंस्ट्रक्टर ने भी बताया 500 मीटर 2 किलोमीटर 5 किलोमीटर 5 हाँ, किलोमीटर में ही आप सेल्फ ड्राइविंग कर सकते हाँ. हैं सो मेक श्योर रखें कि सेल्फ ड्राइविंग लें बड़ा अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस होगा सो so, अभी हम आगे चलते हैं बट टिल देन साइनिंग ऑफ इन दिस वीडियो एंड डोंट फॉर गुड टू क्लिक ऑन द सब्सक्राइब बटन एंड डोंट ऑल्सो डोंट फॉर गुड टू क्लिक ऑन द बेल आइकन और प्लीज कमेंट्स में भी बताएं आपको ये वीडियो कैसा लगा और आपको ये राइड प्लस राइड के साथ जो व्यू था वो पसंद आया कि नहीं और लाइक करना ना भूलें टिल देन बाय बाय सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो